Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Amina and in today's video I will be talking about various departments in dentistry. Before I begin my video, I would just like to tell you that I am not an expert. I have just completed my MDS in oral and maxillofacial surgery a few days late. But to the best of my knowledge, I will be sharing with you whatever knowledge that I have, whatever information that I acquired during counseling and whatever my own personal experiences from my juniors, seniors and my colleagues. Generally speaking, the industry is all about financial situation and breakup. Uh, yes, uh, passion also do comes in it, but I'm just speaking generally. So please video uh, along with your love for the subject and passion. I'll also be speaking about the market value. And also when you're choosing a department, uh, not only your love and your passion matters for the particular department, uh, but I think even your situational status, like your mental status, your emotional status, how much dedication you can give to a particular subject, that also matters. So so starting with conservative dentistry and endodontics, this branch is the mother of all dentistry and obviously this is the bread and butter of dentistry. I feel like endodontics is a very secure branch because everything is happening inside the tooth. Obviously the patient, does not, the patient cannot see what is happening and the patient cannot read the radiograph. Only a dentist can make out whether it has been properly sealed, whether it has been properly fitted. So this is an x-ray which I underwent uh, when I was in BS first year. I had a root canal treatment. Uh, you can uh, very clearly see in the x-ray that the pine has been broken. But uh, it's been 8 years. I still have no pain. Even at that time, I had no pain after the treatment. It was very beautifully seen. The coronal ceiling has been done very beautifully. So obviously, this can be taken as an example that your, the patient does not know anything. Obviously, there has been a clinical disruption, but the patient does not know. But again, in terms of when it is something like visible, like as for example, auto, if you're going to create a diastema while uh, moving the teeth, obviously the patient can see it. So the patient can make, uh, you know, drama out of it. So I think it is very secure even when it comes to patient. And the patient is already so much relief of pain once you're doing access opening. And when it comes to money also, uh, if you want to uh, establish yourself quickly after you complete your MDS, I think this is a very, uh, this is a very secure department in terms of finance also. Uh, I would see that my seniors were already doing consultancy, those who were in endor, at least they were earning 40 to 55,000 uh, while undergoing post graduation itself. Whosoever endorant is as a senior, I know they are at least they are earning 50 to 60,000 per month to consultancy. Obviously, uh, every dentist is doing RCT because everything, uh, RCT is the basic of dentistry and everybody is doing RCT, but not all the cases can be managed by uh, a dentist. And also, 7 out of 10 patients are endo patients in, in a dental clinic. I think this branch is very safe. And even when it comes to private or uh, government colleges, I don't think it matters a lot because like, you are going to have a very good patient flow, be it in a private college because I did my BDS from a private college and I would see my seniors, they would do lots and lots of patients. So I think uh, you are going to have a huge amount of patient flow because RCT patients are everywhere. Now talking about conservative dentistry, I think uh, many of the colleges uh, emphasize very less upon conservative dentistry. But now smile designing is the trend in the western world. Also obviously in our country also now everybody knows uh, about smile designing, its importance. The popularity is growing very high. And the really film stars, celebrities, this is very uh, popular. This, uh, one thing I read about uh, Pons and Endo is that everybody is doing RCT. Everybody is doing Endo. And I have seen one of my seniors, she's conducting the uh, workshop very beautifully. Very good workshop. When they're talking about the tenderness uh, procedure, they're teaching about uh, smile designing program. And they're conducting it very beautifully, very wonderfully, very skillfully. And, and also like people in rural areas, does not know what an endodontist is. Everybody is like, that's fine. As long as you're giving the proper treatment, that is fine. So everybody is doing endo. And in rural areas, obviously, but in metropolitan cities, everybody knows what an endodontist is. But uh, overall, if I want to sum up about this department, it is a very good department. It is a very secure department. And an endodontist is an endodontist at the end of the day. Coming to pediatric dentistry, this is the best branch if you want to immediately set up a clinic as soon as you complete your post graduation because in pediatric dentistry, you are in touch with all the procedures. You are in touch with ortho, you are in touch with um, endo, you are in touch with prostate, you are in touch with ortho, oral surgery. So I think this is a very good, this is a very good branch if you want to immediately establish yourself with a clinic. And also I feel like uh, when you are pursuing pediatric dentistry, you also have an exposure of operation theatre apart from the oral surgery department. You have a very, you have a vast amount of knowledge about all the clinical subjects. But mind you, if you are very bad with children, if you get frustrated easily, 
veterinary this department is not for you because you need lots and lots of patients to handle uh, a child because uh, in my college uh, the pediatric department they do not deal with uh, surgical procedures so we had to deal with children and i used to get frustrated very easily uh, there are very few colleges who are going to deal with um, the surgery part in pediatrics but still if you just want to establish a clinic that's why i'm saying that this is a very really good subject because this is their exclusive pediatrics everybody is uh, apprehensive when it comes to the mental status of the child obviously so they would like to go for a pediatric dentist and i also i also know so many renowned dentists they do not deal with pedo patients because obviously lots of time needs to be invested in them and for example if i can complete uh, at least 10 to 12 extractions within half an hour at least it is going to take half an hour for extracting the tooth of a child because of the cooperation level so therefore it's very important to have patients who have love for children now talking about pedo coming to the private colleges and the government colleges and uh, the patient flow is very less in uh, many colleges so obviously when you are going for a college uh, definitely in a government college the patient flow is always high but when you are looking for a private college make sure that the patient flow is high in that area and i think this department is a very nice department because uh, it is a very chillax department a very cool department you are also doing clinical dentistry you are also learning about the clinics you know you are also learning about you are also doing practical things and you are also learning how to deal with the patient patient management because dentistry is all 90% of dentistry is all about patient management Now talking about Prosto department, I think Prosto is a wonderful department. Uh, Prosto was my first preference, but when you are going to take Prosto department, you have to be very financially strong. So taking that into consideration, I did not opt for this department because uh, one articulator is ninety six thousand. Definitely, uh, you need to have a very good financial backup if you are going to join Prosto. And yes, in Prosto you have to give a lot of dedication. So much of dedication is required in for Prosto because I used to see my colleagues, I used to see my juniors, seniors. They stay in the lab till night, eleven to twelve o'clock. It's a very hectic department, and you have to work a lot. So you know when you're choosing a department, everything comes into play. How much time can you give for that particular time subject? How much dedication can you? Uh, give to the particulars. But talking about the procedures in Prosto, you are doing complete denture, you are doing fixed partial denture. Obviously, smile designing is also a part of Prosto, which is very trendy. As I've already talked about it, and everything like even when it comes to implant, ultimately implant prosthetics plays a very vital role. How you are going to place the prosthesis? Because no matter how much of a good implant you may have placed, if the prosthesis is not correct, the implant is definitely going to Pay. So you become master of the implant. Um, it is also very really difficult when you are doing a full mouth case of an implant. The prosthetic part is very really difficult, and nobody can deal it better than a prosthodontist when it comes to a full mouth implant, and also when it comes to the prosthetic part. Even if the implant is not, even if the implant is not placed in a very proper manner, you can still compromise. You can still compensate it with a good prosthetic. So obviously, if you want to be an implantologist, if you are if you become interested in becoming an implantologist, Prosper is a very good department to choose. Obviously, when it comes to anatomy, when it comes to maxillary sinus, uh, nobody can place a better implant than a maxillofacial surgeon. Because, and also, Prosper is the branch uh, uh, apart from oral surgery. Prosper is the other branch of dentistry which has super specialist course. When I went to oncology, when I had posting in oncology department. Uh, there was also a prosthodontist, you know, who was working in the oncologist department, making all kinds of maxillofacial prosthesis uh, for the carcinoma patient and all. So I found it very cool because you are making those uh, artificial ear, artificial eyes, nose. Like, uh, I think it is so much secret, especially after second wave of COVID, where because of, uh, especially after mucosal mycosis, there is crippling of the oral function. You know? And also, uh, if you are a prosthodontist, you have the license for dental material staff. Again, which is very good for economical uh, upgrade. Even it's about prosto is that obviously uh, there are lab technicians. And part when I was learning a prosthetic part of my implant, I used to learn it from the lab technicians. Obviously, they have experience and they have been working since twenty to fifteen to twenty years. And if you have a very good lab technician, then you don't have to worry about prosto. The overall prosto is a very cool branch, and I think it is. One of the best branch. I, I, for me personally, it is one of the best branch in the industry. Uh, now coming to period department, obviously, obviously implantology is a part of period department. There is, there is very good money making in implantology. You can, you can focus more uh, in implant because um, in what happens in oral surgery is that we have lots of surgical procedures like we have TMJ, we have orthopedic surgery, uh, we have um, TMJ surgeries, orthopedic surgery, we have lots of trauma cases, we have oncology posting. We have plastic surgery, posterior. So we cannot particularly emphasize totally on the implant. We cannot 
uh, do implant work all the time to choose this department. I think it is a very beautiful, it is a very good department for uh, to focus in implantology. But in many of the colleges, I think they do not do implants. So it is very important when you are choosing failure department to choose a good college to ask whether they are doing implant or not in that college. Because in my college, uh, the residents does not do implant. Officially, they do not do implant. Implant is done by faculties only. They just assist uh, the cases. So it is very important if they give free hands in implantology. Because with implant only, you can have more chance of cancer cases. Also, you can do laser surgeries, which is a bloodless field. Obviously, people will prefer uh, laser surgeries uh, over laser surgeries over blood field surgeries because you know, like even if it's a very small procedure or just a phenectomy case, uh, the patient is always uh, apprehensive and the patient will always prefer a laser surgery. And for that, obviously, you need to have lots of money to buy laser. And for consultants, laser surgery is very good. In my college, where I did my uh, BDS, my college, the period department was course, Everybody used to do implant. You know, back to back, they used to do implant and they used to have quota that this much implant uh, should be completed. For Perry, I would say that be it, whether you're going to choose a private college or whether you're going to uh, choose a government college, make sure that they are doing implant. Make sure that they're doing free hands for you to do implant because implant is very important for career and for consistency as well. Now, coming to oral surgery, so when I was undergoing counseling, also everybody told me that. Uh, do not take oral surgery if you are not passionate about it. Especially if you are a girl, if you do not have this you know, die hard love for this subject, definitely you should not choose oral surgery. They say this because oral surgery is a very hectic department. You are going to have night duty, you are going to have casualty, you are going to have emergency duty. For a lifetime, if you are going, you are going to attach yourself to a hospital in lifetime, you are going to have a lot of it. can be very hectic. Uh, I have a friend in GDC Kapayam, she told me that when you have your casualty duty, in a year you can only take four days leave from casualty duty. Duty. You are going to jump from a dental uh, branch to a medical branch. So it's totally different from other uh, branches. Obviously other branches are also very hectic, but, uh, but uh, oral surgery is super hectic. Most people, those who can't qualify, those, those who have uh, failed to pursue their dream as an MBBS doctor, you know, they go for oral surgery. But again, you need to know the harsh reality before joining this subject because this subject can be very hectic and many of the people that I have known, you know, while we were undergoing cons uh, counseling and when I had in contact with them, they were literally crying after joining oral surgery. Uh, when I was pursuing BDS, we have no idea what oral surgery PGs are doing. Obviously, we don't have any idea. Even when I ask my juniors, some of my juniors, they don't even know where the operation theater of our hospital is. And every day you're going to have a round. During round, your faculties will be coming. So you cannot be absent. And uh, talking about uh, government colleges, uh, definitely when you're pursuing your first year PG, you're definitely you are going to fail. You will have no time for yourself. You will see your other colleagues in other departments are enjoying, but you, def you will not be having time for any kind of party. You don't get time for those kinds of party that they enjoy and the amount of the relaxation and the sleep they get. When I was pursuing first year oral surgery PG, I almost went into a depression because I've studied enough, now I want to enjoy my PG life. So definitely you cannot enjoy, especially if you are a first year resident in oral surgery. But fortunately for me, in my college, there's no medical college attached. So definitely it was less hectic compared to other colleges. But again, compared to other departments, it was definitely very, very hectic. And also in oral surgery, you can tie yourself up to a clinic as well as to a hospital. That is also an advantage. If you want to run a clinic, if you want to be a hardcore clinician after oral surgery, then obviously uh, only like very small, very minor surgeries are going to be of value. You'll get consistency for impacts and there is a bread and butter of an oral surgeon uh, and in minor procedures. And I think most of the um, cases does not happen in a clinic. Obviously, they go to a hospital set up. Mostly you're going to get impacts and yes, obviously implant. And, but I think most of the residents in India, apart from my college, yes, that in other colleges, uh, in especially in a government setup, no, no, I'm not talking about private colleges here, especially in a government setup, uh, they do not allow implant because you already have lots and lots of work. You have trauma cases because you come under the category of the trauma surgery. Mostly you're going to have lots of trauma cases every day. We have been 40 days twice a week. And obviously you're very much busy in other um, surgeries. So obviously you have very less time for implant. I know people, who are toppers in their college but they do not know how to place an implant even after completing oral surgery. 
skip like you can do fellowship in oncology you can do fellowship in uh, facial aesthetic surgery you can do fellowship in tmj later on so this whole fellowship program you can also have a fellowship program and you know, we already know that there is mch course for oral surgery that is cranial axillary facial surgery in rishikesh and guwahati but again uh, oral surgery is all about survival of the fittest even if you are very hard working the theory of survival of the fittest comes into play when it comes to uh, oral surgery because you are going to compete with people those who are uh, from mbbs background obviously the patient will prefer an oncologist who is from mbbs background rather than a dental background yes in most of the cases this happens so you have to work very hard and obviously i have also seen people those who are totally in lab dentistry and they are uh, working as an oncologist you know money is less but still it's all about passion or something so i think it matters what you want to do in future if you want to take this uh, department because now coming to the colleges what happens in most of the colleges is that you do not get prelims you know uh, you will only be getting suturing you know rest of the things you know most people will say that we uh, resident will be assessed to do what to do so you are only going to get suturing and you will get to do very less work apart from infection you get nothing in many of the colleges If you have watched other videos of mine, you know that I am from Government Medical College and Hospital Jaipur. I am from GDC Jaipur. So we got lots of free hands in my college because everybody is like there is no medical college. Obviously, there was there was a disadvantage, but again we got a lot of uh, free hands in my college. I did GMC fracture under LA. I did TMJ surgeries. I did four TMJ surgeries. Then I did lots. Of, I did twenty five implants and uh, trauma, paraspinous fracture, ten to twelve cases independently. So they gave lots of free hands in my college in my time. So obviously it depends also year to year, student to student, HOD to HOD is also. So I think it's very important for you to get a good college where, where they give free hands to the resident, because I truly believe it's a waste of time if they do not give you free hands when you reach your third year of PG, because obviously you are going to have struggle again. Obviously after oral surgery you have to struggle for two more years, you know, to establish yourself. It is very, especially if you are seeking for a private college. I think there are very few cases. There are no cases almost. I have known colleges where they do not have operation. Theater and they are going to onco department. So obviously, these all things you should take into consideration. You should ask whether there is a medical college attached. If it's a private college, and also the amount of the patient flow, how much free hands they are giving. Uh, if you want to have a life outside the hospital during your PG life and you are a resident in oral surgery, that is not possible. So you need to make up your mind. You need to prepare yourself that yes, I want to be in this particular department. Uh, considering all these things that I have told you, ultimately it's all about the hard work and the passion that you have. Again, as I have completed PG in oral surgery, I think it's just a matter of three years. And if you are very passionate about it, even if you are a girl, I would definitely tell you that you should go for it. And uh, I'm very short. I'm just four feet nine inch. And uh, one of my senior told me that you know I didn't join oral surgery because I was very short. And in fact, she was at least uh, two inch taller than me. So I think that does not matter. And if you are really passionate about this subject, I will I will not discourage you not to join it. You should go for it. Uh, so this is the part one of my video. In the part two of the video, I will be talking about auto department, uh, public health industry, oral medicine and radiology, or oral pet department. Since the video has been very long, uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching my video. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. It will be very grateful of you because uh, it's 45 degrees Celsius in Delhi. So I have just switched off the AC so that there's no noise in the background. So it is definitely very, very hot. So please do like, share, subscribe and comment. Thank you.